Hello everybody. In this video tutorial, I would like to give a basic introduction to Rhino's operation and interface. Okay, let's start. The first thing we need to do before we embark on a Rhino usage is to first set the units. To do that, you can go to File, Properties, go to Units. And you can see that beside the model units um, option, you are able to select the various type of units. Okay, by default it's set to millimeters. Okay, so uh, different industries are uh, they have different preferences. Okay, so uh, but by default um, we're having a millimeter. So I think I'll just leave it as that. Okay, and click OK. What does that mean? That means that for every grid length we have, it is um, actually corresponding to uh, 1 mm. Okay, so I can actually show you. So go to this. Yeah, you can see there is actually uh, 1 mm. These are tiny, tiny little uh, grid length over here. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about how do you execute a command inside Rhino. Basically, there are two ways to do it. The first way is to type the command directly at the command prompt, okay, which I'm going to uh, demonstrate now. So let's say I want to create a box. I can, at the command prompt, type the word box, B-O-X, then press the enter key or the space bar, okay, so, or the right mouse button. So I press the enter, and then... The prompt will request the first uh, input from me, which is the first corner of the base. So I can go to any of the view, in this case the top view, to click my first corner. And then further prompting will be shown. So in this case, it's telling me to uh, uh, input the other corner of base. So I want the other corner to be here. Okay? Then it prompt me for the height, for example. Okay, so um, I can either at the command prompt type the value of the height, or I can visually set it at the viewport. Okay, so I can let's say uh, I want to visually set it at the viewport. I can uh, go to the viewport and click click down. Okay, to get yep my object. Okay, so as mentioned. This is one way to do it, okay? Which is typing the text at the prompt. Okay, the other way to do it is to simply click on the icon that corresponds to the command. Okay, by the way, um, you notice that some of the icons have a little uh, triangle at the bottom right. If you press and hold uh, those icons and you uh, pull the toolbar using the, the, the top handle, you'll be able to uh, display a corresponding set of uh, tools that uh, is related somewhat to, to this icon, okay? Yeah, so yeah, see if I do that, I pull this one out, you can see I have all the solid creations, okay? So as mentioned, um, you can also I skip a command by clicking an icon, so I can click the box, and then you can see the same prompts appear. So my first corner, okay, and this is the second corner, and okay, as mentioned, uh, you can also key a value to to set the as the input. So let's say I want this to be ten, I can type ten, enter. Yep. Yeah. I've uh, executed the command again. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at uh, some of the ways to navigate the the three D viewports. Okay. For viewport navigation, if you want to zoom in and out of the view, you can use the scroll wheel. Okay. So let's say. Uh, I want to zoom in out of this perspective view. I'm using the scroll wheel now, scrolling uh, forward and back, backward. Okay. By the way, if you want to maximize a view, 
you can uh, go to that particular view click on the the label here double click it okay now i'm maximizing and to go back to the original uh viewport layout you can double click on it again okay so double click will toggle between maximizing and going back to the original layout okay mm. okay so um as mentioned to zoom in and out you can use a scroll wheel or if you desire to a smooth zooming you can use a control plus right mouse button okay so Pressing and holding a control key, then uh, dragging using the right mouse button allows you to execute a smooth zoom. Okay. Okay, to pan the view, namely the autographic views, you use the right mouse button. Okay, so let's say I want to pan this view, I'm um, pressing and holding the right mouse button. Uh, you can see I am actually panning, okay? But you notice if I were to do that in the perspective view, pressing and holding the right mouse button, it is executing a rotation of the view instead. Okay, so how do you pan in the perspective view? To pan in the perspective view, you use the shift plus right mouse button. That means you press and hold the shift key, drag using the right mouse button. Okay. Okay, as mentioned earlier, rotating the view, the perspective view is using the right mouse button. Okay. Yeah, so rotating using the right mouse button. Okay, let's talk about some of the various uh, display mode inside uh, the viewport. Okay, if you hover and right mouse click over this uh, label, you can see that there are different type of display modes. Okay, click on this, now getting a wire display. This is a shaded display. This is a rendered display. And this is, this is ghosted. Okay. So these are the various display mode, okay? And let's uh, briefly talk about the, the zoom commands, okay? So here are some of the zoom commands. The ones that I find that's useful for me is, let's say, uh, this one, zoom window. Let's say I want to see this corner. I can click on zoom window and drag over to see this corner, okay? If I want to see the entirety of the scene, to see all the objects in the scene, I can use this zoom extend. Now I'm seeing the, the entirety of the scene. Okay. And let's, let me just put another stuff here to just uh, illustrate what I'm talking about. Okay, let's say I have this. And if I click the zoom extent, I'm seeing the entirety of the scene. Okay. And if you select on this and you want to just see this, you can use the zoom selector. Okay. Yeah. So these are the various zoom that and help you to navigate the scene better. Okay, now let's move on to talk about some of the hotkeys that might help us to use our Rhino faster. Some of the useful hotkeys are include this, okay? The auto, which is the F8 key. Okay, so let me just demonstrate what is meant by the auto. Let me just delete this. Delete this. Okay, the auto is actually this this one over here. Can you see if I click on this, it turns a uh, bow. That means the auto is in operation. Okay, so uh, let me just show you. Like, okay, now my auto is turned off. So I want to draw polylines. Okay, we can see that my movement of the cursor is quite free. But let's say if I decided that the next space is going to be auto for me you can click the auto and you notice that the movement of the cursor is constrained to vertical and horizontal movement only so yeah the auto will constrain your movement to horizontal and vertical movements okay yeah so this is the auto and the hot key for it is the f8 key you can use the f8 key to toggle uh on or off the auto mode okay 
and then you have uh, something called the toggle auto which is uh, pressing holding the shift key that means instead of clicking the F8 you can press and hold the shift key to turn on the auto okay so uh, for example let me show you let's say I'm drawing um, drawing this line again and I'm quite free and if I press and hold the shift key the auto is in operation okay if I release the shift I'm free again okay yeah so uh, that is a uh, temporary auto okay okay snap to grid is the F9 key okay so snap to grid okay so um, it's this one okay grid snap so if I turn on the grid snap you notice that uh, my movement is uh, constrained to the intersections of the grids okay yeah if I take this off you can see my cursor movement is free I'm free to uh, not snap onto the, the grid okay and as mentioned the hotkey is uh, F9 okay to clear a command without without completing it is the escape key okay okay with that I come to the end of uh, this session hope that's been useful to you bye